Yo, I am Tripolar Bear, and I've got 20 tips for new players. These are questions I've gotten on my stream, things I've kind of encountered a lot doing streaming, getting new players in here, and answering a lot of their questions, as it seems I can just kind of gather them all in one place and answer them all at once instead of piecemeal like I've been doing. Uh, you get one tip for free, by the way, all right? It's 20 tips. I'm giving you one for free. Uh, I'm doing this in one take because it's league start, and the first free tip is you need to get in maps and start doing them right now. <laughs> All right, if you're playing PoE and you want to increase the power of your character, you wanna get more currency, the number one thing you need to be doing is not sitting in your hideout and not constantly scrolling through Reddit, Twitter, whatever, right? Uh, put me on a second monitor if you've got one and just do a map, turn your brain off, pay attention to the video, obviously, but, you know, progress a little bit. Try to pay attention while having your brain off and doing some maps. Uh, so, Number one tip, the real ones now, are solving mana. This is a problem that a lot of people encounter. They kind of are running out of mana. This is through the campaign and whatnot. And these are going to be tailored towards campaign, then Atlas, then Endgame. Uh, probably one or two will be mixed up in the order, but we'll start with the very early and probably most relevant for new, new people. Uh, so mana. The easiest thing you can do is to just use a mana flask. If you find that you've reserved too much of your mana and using a mana flask is really uncomfortable because the mana flask effect is removed once your mana fills. I'm going to assume you can't roll a mana flask with alterations to get the enduring modifier, which would keep your mana flask going. Uh, right, that is a possibility, so it doesn't remove when it's full. You can just remove one of your auras, and that's exactly what you should do. Just take an aura off, and now you should have like 30% of your mana, and it's going to be so much more comfortable. Uh, you could also try replacing that aura with something like Clarity, uh, a lot of classes get this in Act 1, otherwise you get this in Act 6 once you do the Lily quest. Other than this, once you've progressed, once your build's a little bit better, there are things like Elrion Unveil on Jewelry. This adds a flat minus mana cost and can, can, be, uh, can be combined with other things like reduced mana cost, which can be found on the tree. So, uh, stuff like Templar has very easy access to reduced mana cost by getting the tireless wheel here, where you have reduced cost of life skills. Uh, if you need, there's also a two pointer right here for re more reduced mana cost. There are things like mana masteries for 10 reduced mana cost you can pick up as well. And my favorite, which was just added this league, is a life mastery that makes, it's the very last one, your skills cost 30% of their mana cost instead of mana, it's life. So it's pretty much 30% reduced mana cost and the life cost you've got to just have a little regen a little leech something to get that back but it's not as bad as it may sound you will barely notice this if you have any amount of recovery at all and that is a very very easy pickup uh, other than that we have things like eldritch battery this makes it so your energy shield this is what my build uses right now is over your mana and you're spending your energy shield instead of your mana and this lets you reserve all the way down you see here i have zero mana i've reserved 100 percent of my mana but then i just use energy shield to cast all of my abilities and it's always recharging which is very very nice no matter what my es always recharges while i have eldritch battery so i can very easily just offload all my mana cost to that now this does require you to have enough energy shield because your recharge is a percentage of your total so I'm only recharging, I believe it's like 20%. Uh, so I'm getting like 200 mana per second, something like that. Uh, so that's just something you have to keep in mind. Early in the league, when you're on four links, you can get away with like 300 ES and be fine. But as soon as you get a six link and you're casting multiple abilities, you need, you know, 700 to 1000 to be comfortable. Tip two, getting resistances during the campaign. Uh, this one's easy. It's super easy. Just go to your crafting bench, control F and type... R-E-S. One of the only options you'll have, this is very early on in Act 1, is going to be one transmutation for 16 to 20 res. I like to, later on, right, around Act 3, I'll craft my gear with whatever I need to cap my res out. I'll press C, go to Defense tab, see what isn't 75 yet, and before I fight the last boss in Act 3, Dominus, you're ascending the tower. Uh, I'll cap my resistances there. Now, if you're uncomfortable, you can do it before then. Past that, pick up four links, use an essence on them, and then craft resistance where there's a suffix open. Easiest way to see if you have an open suffix is to go to options, go to UI, 
and find the advanced mod descriptions. Those are kind of necessary to play the game <clears throat> past just like leveling and whatnot. Show full descriptions. This needs to be on and this needs to be on for something else as well. What this allows you to do is you hold alt over an item and it'll show you how many suffixes you have because early on you won't know which mods are suffixes and each rare can only have three prefix and three suffix. So you find one of your items that has a suffix open and then you can do the resistance craft on that. And that's how you should cap your res throughout the whole campaign, picking up items, using essences on your four links and then doing the res craft. Uh, bandits, we'll go to question four. This is a question I get very often. Bandits are super simple. You should never, ever, ever have to ask a streamer what bandits to take for their build. There is one rule and one rule only. If you are a crit build, you kill Alira. If you are not a crit build, you, or if you're a crit build, you save Alira. excuse me. You save Alira. she gives critical strike multiplier, especially on league starters, it is very nice. She gives res and crit multi. You help Alira if you're a crit build and you can use the crit multi or you kill them all, that's it. So crit builds, help Alira. boom. All right, now, what Atlas passive tree should you follow? Well, obviously, you should go to max roll and you should look at our Atlas passive tree section. But to put it very plainly and very easily for you, when you're first starting out, the easiest thing you can do is come out the right side, taking the additional Jun chance because you need to unveil rares at the start of the league to obtain a lot of crafts on your crafting bench. It's necessary that you do Jun missions and unveil the gear that it drops from those missions. You come up here, you take shaping, you take shaping, come up Kirik, take shaping, take shaping. So very plainly, you take the Jun mission to the right, you go up and you take both shapings, Kirik, another both shapings. And that's the generic way to do it. Outside of this, find something you like, find an article on Max Roll. Maybe you like farming expedition the first few times you came upon it. Maybe you like doing some strongbox stuff or, you know, uh, legions and stuff like that. Uh, you can combine a lot of these things, but generally that's all you need to progress all the way to red maps are the four shaping nodes and these Kirek things. And the Kirek things are really important because Kirek will sell you maps early on for chance orbs. So this is what you spend all your chance orbs on. When you get to yellow maps and low reds, he'll sell them for elks as well. Starts to stop being so worth it here, but the chance orbs are a steal. And you, when you have the advanced item description, you can hold alt and it will show you if the Atlas map and the bonus objective have been complete. It's very, very handy. Now, his vendor resets when you do a Kirek mission. So you don't even have to complete the mission. It's only when you open it. So if I open this map here, now his window has been refreshed and I have new maps that I can hold alt on and see if I have them completed. Now I've completed my Atlas, so they're all green, but you would look for red. And when you're doing maps for completion, make sure when you're doing white maps that they're at least blue with a transmutation orb, yellow maps at least rare with an alchemy, and red maps need to be rare and corrupted for you to get the completion and unlock an Atlas passive for doing that map. All right, so next is upgrading your gear. This is the general progression that everybody needs to go through. First, you will pick stuff up off the ground. You're gonna find gear and you're going to kind of make do by finding a piece of gear and crafting on the crafting bench one modifier when available. The second step is going to be purchasing items off of the trade. We have some trade articles. I can't go too deep into it uh, on max rolls. I would read the trade articles. Uh, we've got a lot of nice tips in there and it helps out to know all the little tricks of purchasing gear. But generally purchasing something and looking for gear that has a suffix or a prefix open or something that doesn't have life on it so you can craft life on it. Stuff like that is going to be your next tier past finding. And lastly, you should craft gear. Crafting gear is currency intensive and it's going to make you lose your mind if you don't have that much money because you may just lose all of your currency and now you have no upgrades to make and it's kind of upsetting. So when you're doing crafting like this, you need to make sure that your build is already good enough where you can afford to maybe potentially not get that slot upgraded yet and still be able to farm maps and make currency, right? But crafting is pretty easy. We can cover a very simple craft later on. 
in the tips. What build to play? Uh, this one I get asked a lot. What do I play? I would go to max roll and I would look to large streamers, YouTube channels. These are two pretty reliable sources. Generally, at, uh, large streamers have a following because they're reliable and they give good advice. Now, sometimes someone might do something goofy, okay? But they're not gonna do something so goofy that the build is literally unplayable. If you go to random YouTubers, sometimes you will find builds that are literally unplayable. They are just bottom of the barrel garbage stuff. You would be better off <laughs> Just do it. You would be better off doing a lot of things, okay, with your time rather than following these YouTuber builds. So, generally, people who stream have to be held accountable. YouTubers don't necessarily have to be held as accountable. And so, the streamers are kind of the reliable sources. Uh, and then, of course, Max Roll. Obviously, you go to Max Roll, you go to build guides, and you can look at all of the league starters. Literally, every build here is very, very good. They are all reliable and they are all good as league starters and then we have stuff like mid game what you do after your league starter things like end game what you do when you have lots of currency that you've grinded out and you want to kind of dominate the game so that's what i should do just do whatever sounds fun man try a bunch of builds out every league lasts three months and you can spend you know a week or more on a league or on a build and that's a lot of the league that you have to be able to play a bunch of builds so just try to find what you like whether it's bossing mapping etc. Just try a bunch out and you'll eventually get a groove for things and know what to look out for. Uh, what do you do when your build isn't working is a very common question that I get. And it is an extremely frustrating moment for players when the build just doesn't feel like it's working when you're doing everything right. Now, I'm going to assume that you've gotten a build from someplace like Maxroll or a large trusted streamer. Uh, their builds work. They do. Our builds work. Their builds work. So when yours isn't working, you have to take some accountability. There's something that you are missing. It is most likely not the build that is at fault. It is your interpretation of it. It is how you have created it. So if you are following a max roll build, the single easiest thing you can do to fix your build is to make sure that you go to the build article, you go to gear progression, and you go to our milestone system and you just read step by step, right? A lot of people, when I look over their path of building, which is a program that kind of lets me see all the stats of people's builds. When I look over their POB, some people are missing step two. They didn't even get to step two of the milestone system. And it's kind of disappointing because there is so much work put out to these articles and they have just missed step two. And flasks, for example, are step two on all of my builds. These are so important. It is such an easy source of defense to have your flasks properly set up and they are so cheap. They can be done as soon as you do like five white maps, right? They're just alteration orbs. You vendor identified rare gear and you obtain alteration orbs then you just use them on your flasks. It's super easy. So reading the article, the second easiest thing to do is to open your POB and open the streamers or the max roll POB. So you'll import your character on one. So I would go here, I go to try polar bear, type in my account name, crucible league, TPB, big D. I find my abilities, I try if I can, to copy the config so i would alt tab between these and copy the configuration right uh whether it's ignited if it's blinded do i have charges you would just copy whoever's pob you're following and i would open both of these and i would put them side by side or i would alt tab between the two and what you can do really easy is obviously you can see the damage but you can go to calculations you can set the abilities so let's say this is death wish and then let's say i'm comparing to another Maw of Mischief character instead of the character I have now. I would go to the abilities and I would see increased. And I would compare increased. I'd say, oh my gosh, right? I'm missing 300% increased damage. Where am I missing that from? Okay, do I have any of these items? I don't have any of these items, right? You go line by line and you do almost an, uh, what is it, itemization. Uh, you, you just create a little list and then you can go to your notes tab here 
and you can say, all right, uh, this is what I did yesterday on my leaf starter. I said, uh, upgrade chest, upgrade gem levels, uh, get new amulet, anoint amulet, and you just go down and you make a little list for yourself of every single change that needs to happen for the POBs to line up. Uh, the last tip is to obtain all the small things. There's a lot of small stuff that is extremely important. Everything we put in the POB should be obtained eventually. Not right away, right? I get it. You got to grind your maps. You got to unlock your unveils. But if I put something in there, it's because I want you to get it. If you miss one thing on your body armor, one thing on your amulet, one thing on your gloves, boots, weapon, and you're missing nodes on the tree, you are probably down 30 to 40% of the damage you could otherwise have and or a lot of the survivability if you've been skipping the small stuff. The small stuff adds up, right? Every small stuff, every small thing you miss is a compounding 5%. Uh, remember what they say about compound numbers? It's the eighth magic of the world or whatever, okay? And it's the same in POB. That is very important. Small things add up. All right, next tip. Number eight, listing stuff for sale. This is super easy. Once you've purchased stash tabs, I will have a quad tab if you are uh, not so uh, inundated with a bunch of tabs. You could do like normal premium tabs and then you could set a, uh, a price of these. But I like to do quad tabs, right? I bought a bunch of ta stash tabs over the years and I'll set a price on the whole tab. I will identify... Once I've vendored enough things to get alts to roll my flasks and whatnot, I'll ID everywhere and I will put it in a tab. I almost don't even look at the gear uh, at some point when I know I won't be able to get upgrades from the ground anymore. I will just put it in the tab without even looking at it. It saves me a lot of time. And if I get two PMs for that item, or if I just put something in there and people are whispering, whispering me right away, I know that that item is probably worth more than whatever I put it in the tab for. Now you might ask, what should I price my tabs at? And to that, I say, whatever the hell you want, man. Uh, in the early league, I'll do two chaos. And then I'll hit a point where I'm like, man, I'm better than this. I don't need to do two chaos trades anymore. And I'll do five. And then I'm like, dude, five chaos trades. Those are so annoying. I'm only doing 10 chaos trades now. And that's where I'm at now. Now, two days from now, three days from now, I might say, screw this, dude. I don't want to do trades that are less than 20 C each. And then I'll set every tab to 20 chaos. Uh, if you get PMs for an item, that'll be the next tip. How do I price check an item? Well, you will grab Awaken Trade Macro. I have this link down in the description of the YouTube channel. But it's a program called Awakened PUE Trade. And Awakened PUE Trade is super helpful. Now that you have advanced mod description on, it's necessary that you have that checkbox for this to work properly. But you'll hold control, then press Alt, and then press D over an item. And it'll bring this little window up. You can set in the settings to have a predicted price. I don't think it's default. But if you do just that, uh, you can see you can see it has this little prediction here. I can set, you know, rares to whatever. Rares are really tricky. Uh, a really easy thing is like a unique, right? Any unique you pick up, right? Rares can have a bunch of mods, but uniques are very specific. 1.7 divines for these boots. Now, if I have a good roll, I just click this right here and we see and it's 1.7, maybe it's 1.9, right? If I wait a little bit, I can click my enchant. Uh, the enchant, there's no none of these boots online with this enchant, all right? That adds a lot of value. My helmet here has good res roll, I can sell it for maybe 12, 13 chaos. Uh, that stuff is super, super easy. Uh, you, random uniques are super free. Otherwise, when you get things like fractured modifiers, uh, fractured stuff, there's going to be another tab here where you go to base item and then you can click off of the base percentile. That doesn't matter. Off of this base. So it's just any shield. And I can see what 19% spell suppression fractured goes for. It's about 10 chaos on an item level 85 shield. Uh, well, actually that was 18. All right, but for 19, it's like 10, 15 C. And so you can just price check fracture stuff. You can price check many, many things. It's just when you do rares, it gets very tricky. You kind of have to specify a little bit. 
but that is how you can tell how much something's worth. You can do this with clusters. You can do it with jewels. It's very, very easy to do that with a lot of the stuff. All right, easy defense upgrades. Number nine, auras are super easy. Determination, grace, defines manner, the classics. Other than this, you need to combine them with flasks. So that's why flasks are so important. Uh, you see here, I have a jade flask with increased armor. That's really important. I don't have increased armor on the tree. I have a granite flask, which gives me a flat 1500 armor. And on another flask, I have evasion rating. So I have increased armor here. I have evasion rating here. Another important thing to get on flasks is reduced curse effect. You should have armor, evasion, and reduced curse effect on nearly every build, unless that build is not using determination or grace, and then you drop armor or evasion rating. But every build should start and have at least reduced effect of curses. A mod's really good. And then you can add attack speed, cast speed, move speed, whatever you want for that last one. Aside from this, life recovery is super, super nice. If you're a suppression build, picking up a helmet like Elevor is very nice, where you recover 175 life when you suppress spell damage. And if you have suppression, you should have 100% or damn near 100% spell suppression. So every time you take spell damage, you're recovering 175 life. So it's like minus 175 to whatever damage you're taking. It's really, really nice because there's a lot of spells that'll hit a bunch, but they're very small. And this makes you immune to them. Another easy thing, this is a tip for this league only, unless this league mechanic goes core. I bought a shield. I looked up a shield specifically that had a crucible tree with recover 3% of life when you suppress spell damage so that I could give up Elevor and have a different helmet. Recover three life when you suppress is crazy. That is so good. So that's one tip, right? For recovery, if you're suppression. If you're block, there are life on block and energy shield on block mods. You can get it as a synthesized implicit. You can get it as a influence thing. You would just go to the trade site and you would search uh, life on block. So anytime you're looking for mods on the trade site, you hold shift and then you press your tilde key. And this lets you type a, uh, it lets you type piecemeal instead of having to give the literal exact wording. So I, if I want to find the life on block, I'll type life block. And what I'm looking for is the percent life, not the flat life. Percent life, recover a number of percent life when you block. So I search this mod and it's going to bring up a bunch of shields. And so I would want to specify even further than that because I can do better than this, right? So I would say I want at least one resistance. Uh, so we can do that. I want to have a total to elemental resistances of at least 50. Okay, so maybe two crappy ones or we can, we can do 40. So it'd be two crappy ones or one good one. And then I also want to make sure that this has at least 70 life. And the pseudo here lets it be crafted life or real life. And so here I can get 4% life on block. I can get 16 to all res and I can get 83 life for 45 chaos. That's a steal if you are a cap block character. Aside from this, there are things on the tree like life on kill and damage recoup. The recoup is kind of meh unless you stack a bunch, but the life on kill is very, very good. Uh, there is multiple sources of life on kill and it's really good while you're clearing maps. It doesn't do much against bosses, but that's okay. While you're clearing maps, it's that instant life feedback. Otherwise, stuff like life recovery from flask is really good from these nodes here if you're nearby and combining that with a good life flask like this where it's instant recovery on low life, which is below 50%. So if you get chunked, you press this and you get an instant 2000 life. Otherwise, it's 2000 life over two seconds. That stuff's really good. There are some other uh, recovery sources. You have stuff like regen. Uh, regen, you can roll it on your gear. You can get it on the tree. There are some other sources, but uh, easy ones while mapping are stuff like life on kill. It's real snappy and it feels very nice. But making sure you invest a little bit into recovery is pretty nice. Uh, how to get more damage. So damage is a little tricky. A common misconception about damage is that you just upgrade your weapon and now you do more damage. And that's not necessarily true, right? The cheapest way to get damage if you're just starting into maps is to purchase a five link and to get a weapon if you're a spellcaster that has like one or two mods and then you can craft a third one. So you would grab like for this build, it does cold damage. 
you would grab plus one level of all cold spell skill gems on a wand or a scepter. And then you would craft cold damage over time multiplier since this deals cold damage over time. Uh, so then you have like a two mod weapon and you can grab a plus one cold shield, uh, stuff like that. You just get real good, real cheap damage. Leveling your gems is super important. Getting quality on your gems is super important. Uh, you kind of just do a lot of the basic stuff right away. Leveling up gives you a lot of damage. So you want to make sure you're always leveling and not kind of just like dying constantly to do uh, to content you can't do yet. Otherwise, it's stuff like the unveiled crafts uh, on amulets, stuff like non-damage ailment effect for elementalists is very good. Uh, for slayers, you have things like damage while leeching and you are always leeching most like pretty much as a slayer. So that is just damage all the time. Uh, pathfinders, you have damage during flasks. And there's a lot of random crafts that add a bunch of damage too. But generally, you just follow the POB or the max roll article for whatever you're following and make sure you get those crafts and get that stuff too. But the easiest is always to just buy your five link and make sure that you have leveled up gems buying a level 21 gem. Otherwise, damage while mapping, you can buy something like Death Rush, which is a little expensive, but obtaining adrenaline from somewhere, uh, putting down your curses, popping the correct abilities like your auras and stuff like this while you're mapping, making sure you're using all the utility you can is really important too. Uh, for mapping faster, that's a little bit easier. Uh, you can remember that like you rolled cast speed on your flask, right? It's really important to have like attack or cast speed here, depending on what kind of build you are. Getting onslaught gives attack and cast speed 20% as well. So using a silver flask or getting onslaught from another source, making sure you at least have that is super important. Using movement abilities. Uh, if you are playing a build that doesn't have like shield charge and flame dash, shield charge, frost blank, leap slam, uh, whirling blades, stuff like that, you really, really need to make sure that you're kind of moving as efficiently as you can using flame dash when you can, right? Because like these abilities speed you up a whole bunch. Being able to just go and shield charge around uh, makes you very, very quick. So if you don't have that, you got to make sure you're keeping flasks up all the time, flame dashing when you can. Uh, most builds are going to use shield charge though, or leap slam or something, right? So you just make sure you're efficient with your movement abilities. Uh, and then just making sure that you're not casting your abilities too much on a monster. If you're damaged over time, you kind of just let it kill, right? You don't have to sit there and wait. You have a loot filter. You can just go back and get whatever loot drops. Speaking of loot filters, here's one tip that I forgot. Uh, everybody always asks, what loot filter should I use for my build? Just go to filter blade and grab semi strict. Uh, build makers do not make filters for their builds generally. We all will use tie tie killers filter while leveling. And if that doesn't work, we'll come here and we'll use the semi strict never sync filter. Then when it's when I feel like I'm dropping too much stuff, I'll go to strict and then I'll go to very strict and then I'll just download it. We have a max roll article for filters. Guys, we have a max roll article for everything. Okay, just go read some max roll articles. <laughs> All right. How do craft gear? This is super easy. Crafting is not intimidating at all, unless you let it be. 90% of crafting that you should be doing is going to be super easy stuff to kind of cap your suppression out or get enough stats. Uh, if there's not something specific on trade that you can buy for pretty cheap. So something like this, I bought fractured suppression gloves for very cheap. And then all I did was use a resistance essence until I hit a third resistance. And then I crafted life. This is super easy to get. You can you, you can do this for pretty cheap. Uh, and then if your prefixes are filled, there's stuff like Eldritch currency that you can use uh, that will re-roll or add or remove a suffix or prefix depending on what the dominant uh, Eldritch force is. And so you just use like a higher Eldritch currency on this. So, you know, if I wanted to, if I wanted to make the Searing Exarch dominant to slam a prefix on here i would just use one of these and make sure before i like roll my implicits right i would use a, a lesser if there was some on there already and then i would use a grand right or i'd use a greater just to make sure it's slightly a higher tier and then i can do that uh and then that's an easy way to make sure that your prefixes aren't all filled up so you can craft life or something like that and then you would roll your implicits like normal but 90 percent of crafting is going to be getting a fractured base using essences on it 
or fossils or using a harvest reforge or something. Mainly it's going to be essences though. Uh, until you hit another mod and then you are going to do a craft in the end. Past that, you can do stuff like locking suffixes with suffix can't be changed craft, but that's expensive. It's, it's two divines to do that. And then you could do like veiled chaos orbs or you can do ashling, but most of the time just grabbing a fractured base for suppression stuff and getting a good suppression roll and two good resistances or a res and a stat is going to be good enough and then you craft life. It's really easy to cap suppression like that in trade league. Uh, what to farm for currency? I get this a uh, question a lot. The easiest thing you can farm for currency is expedition, legion, or or slash and red altars. Expedition is really, really easy to farm. You can elk and go it very easily. You can farm the logbooks very easily. And uh, we have articles for how to do that on max roll. Uh, so I would check those out. But very simply, for expedition within your map, you are going to look for the big skulls on the sticks, the big ones, the biggest skulls on the sticks. And you are going to try to put the plunger, the explosion circle over all of those that you can, while also making sure the first things that you pick up are anything that gives quantity of log books. So there are some that say log books from runic monsters or just quantity of items dropped. There's some other good ones, but we can keep it simple, right? Log, you look for the word log book, you look for the word quantity of items dropped, and then you get all the big skulls and you make sure that when you are doing this, you read the yellow words and make sure they don't line up with whatever uh, damage type you have, right? It'll say immune to cold. So I can't choose that. But if it says immune to fire, I'm good because so, I do cold damage, right? And you just take all the expedition nodes on the tree. Uh, Legion is really easy. Just take all the Legion nodes and then you open it up and you kill all the monsters and they're going to have chests. And they're going to have rewards and you make a bunch of money. Red altars, uh, you choose Searing Exarch influence. You get that later on while you're mapping. And then you will get an altar. You read it, make sure the altar mods don't destroy your survivability and uh, you try to get some good rewards out of them and that's the easiest thing you can do is expedition legion or red altars it's super super easy if your build is good enough they're always good and you can do them even in lower tier maps like yellow maps if you can't do them in red maps yet you can't do red altars except for in red maps but expedition legion are fine uh, what's this item worth we already covered that with the awaken trade macro how much i spend on your gear your goal with your build should be to spend more than a divine in every slot. Ideally, you can go a little bit higher, but don't pretend that your gear is okay when you spend only five chaos with it for the whole duration of the build. Your gear might be like good enough for you to technically complete some content, but when you spend that little on gear, you don't get many mods out of it which makes every other piece need to carry harder. And you're not carrying harder with those other pieces, right? When you only get two or three good mods on your gloves, but you still need res or stats, that means you're really kind of just squeezing every other piece. And if all your gear is that squeezed, then you're probably having to do really dumb things like get extra points on the tree for stuff that you could have just gotten on your gear. So now you're losing damage there and you're losing damage on your gear because you didn't get enough mods and it gets really messy and you know, your reses aren't overcapped and now it's just a mess, right? Whereas if you get gear that has mods everywhere, right? Like this ring has high life and then three good resistances. If I didn't get this chaos res here, I just wouldn't be able to get it anywhere else, right? Like I might just not have that chaos res. And now that I don't have that chaos res, I'm like negative 40 chaos res if that happens on two pieces of gear. And now when something hits me with chaos damage, I get one shot. That is not fun. And that is not good, right? I don't want to get one shot. I want to get XP so I can level, so I can get more damage, so I can continue to snowball. And so having gear that has good rolls and filled with suffixes and life on a prefix and then a craft, stuff like that is really, 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 really important, all right? triple resistance and then life here stuff like this isn't that expensive to search on trade you know 30 40 c but you can easily go beyond that just have a goal of eventually spending some good money on your gear so that your build feels fine right a lot of people stop at 5c and uh, then the build kind of sucks because their gear is just bad red maps are too hard what do you do when a red map is too hard it's super easy do a yellow map just do yellow maps 
if the red maps are too hard and you're poor and you can't buy upgrades, you can't purchase anything, you have like 10 chaos and you're doing red maps and they're just way too tricky, uh, just go down in tier. Roll 10, 20 yellow maps. You can even go to white maps. Uh, just do maps. Just do anything you can. Get in a map and make currency. Right? If you have expedition nodes, you can use expedition in a white or a yellow map. Same with legion. These are still pretty good. You get a little bit less, of course, right? Especially from expedition. Your logbooks are going to be a lower level. You probably won't be able to sell them to players, but you could just use them yourself. And you can still make decent enough money in a white or a yellow map instead of struggling through red maps. It's just not worth it to do a red map really slow and die a bunch compared to doing white maps and yellow maps really quickly and not dying. Ideally, when you do red maps, you want to do red maps where you're not dying a bunch and you can do them quickly. If that's not the case, then you should probably go down in map tiers. What stash tabs should you buy? Currency. I think currency, th these are kind of in my order. I think the currency tab is the most important. Just keep everything organized to make it easy to sell stuff and to make it so you can stack up lots of currency. Otherwise, it takes up so much space. Then I would say a map tab. Map tabs are super important just to see all the tiers and whatnot. You can easily see which maps need progression, uh, you know, which tiers you need to buy and whatnot, what you got to do to get your Atlas completion done. And it saves so much space and you don't have to micromanage your maps and get rid of them all the time. Then I would say get a premium tab, whether it's quad or just a normal premium so that you can make a dump tab so you, that you can sell stuff very easily. Uh, then I would say fragment. Getting a fragment tab is super nice. It keeps all of your emblems, all of this, any breach stones and stuff, all the scarabs, and then your invitations. Then I'd get a quad, and then I'd get whatever else. If you're ballin', you can get all these other ones. You know, unique tab, div card, fossils, catalyst, del deli orb, flasks. Um, but these are the most important, I think. All right, how do you make currency with a bad build? We covered it already a little bit. But a white map, you can do legions in white maps. You can do expeditions in white maps. Those are super easy and accessible content that you can do in lower tier maps. And when you have a bad build, your bad build should never, it's probably not ever bad enough where you can't do white maps, right? That would have to be an absolutely horrendous build where you can't even do white maps, right? A T1 map, a T2 map uh, is some of the most accessible end game content, you know, end game in quotations. Uh, it's the very start. They're meant to be easy you should be able to do stuff in white maps. Also, doing blight maps. If you have any currency at all, you can do blighted maps. Uh, there's a lot of guides on YouTube on how to do these. I know Zizarin just released a, a, a guide on this, but a blight map is a zone where you're doing a tower defense kind of game. It's a tower defense mechanic. And this is what they look like. You anoint these with oils you'll make them easier you'll follow whatever oils the guide tells you to do and same with your rings and these are super accessible because it is a tower defense mechanic it does not require you to even have any power on your build at all you can do blight maps you can farm them without having to use any abilities on your character you simply must have capped resistance so you don't just get one shot by random projectiles that hit you so you can even do, you know, yellow tier blight maps. You could go to white tier blight maps. And once you're comfortable, you can do red tier blight maps. These will drop oils, currency, maps, etc. You will get a lot of everything from blight maps. They're very good. And you can do them on any build because you don't need a build to do them, really. Uh, other than that, sextant rolling. This one is good if you have an amount of currency already. Because you need enough to buy a bunch so that you can sell them while you roll them. Uh, this one's a little more of an advanced technique, right? But sextant rolling is a good one. If you kind of mess up your build, but you still have some currency, you can make a lot of money by rolling awakened sextants. Uh, other than this, these no, these are, yeah, this is what I would absolutely recommend. These are like pretty easy accessible things that you can do with bad builds to make enough currency to buy regrets or to hopefully figure out what the issue is and buy the upgrades that you need to make your build good. All right, how do you beat PoE's endgame bosses? 
Uh, stuff like Uber Elder, Maven, how do you beat these guys? Well, you can go to Max Roll and read our bossing articles and kind of gain an understanding of their abilities and whatnot. But at the end of the day, you're going to have to buy the boss, right? You buy Maven's, uh, you buy Maven's writ, you buy Uber Elder's fragments. You're going to have to do that. Then you're going to have to go in and you're going to have to die and it's going to suck and it's going to feel bad. But you got to do that. All right. Everybody's done it. We have all wasted currency buying bosses to slowly learn them to ride the bike you must fall down to learn how to beat bosses in PUE, you must rip all six portals this may happen multiple times and that's okay you just have to try to learn at least one ability learn how you goofed up learn what happened wrong look up what happened you know maybe you died to a move and you're like what the heck was that you go look it up in a guide and you're like oh okay well now i know for the next time Slowly but surely, you'll eventually kill it in six portals. Then the next time, you may kill it in three. Maybe next league, it goes to four portals, right? You don't kill it for a while, and you're like, oh, man, that kind of sucks. Maybe you rip it next league, but slowly but surely, you'll eventually learn them. And the bosses are very fair, except seeing Exarch, okay? F those balls. But the bosses in this game are extremely fair. Every single boss except Cyrus, is very fair in their abilities. <clears throat> they can all be countered by you being good at the game. Every single boss. Even the uber bosses. Those are some of the most difficult bossing content in the game, right? They're extremely difficult. If you're good, you can beat them on bad builds. If you're bad, then you need a very good build to beat some of these bosses. So it is much easier to just learn the boss instead of getting a build unless your your sole goal is to farm the bosses. If you want to do them once, it's much easier to just get good than it is to have so much currency in a build that you one-shot every boss and you're like, wow, I finally did it. I killed all the bosses in the game. All it took was me grinding a bunch until I could have so much damage that I one-shot them all. I am so skillful. You could do that, but... I think it's easier for next league when you have to do stuff on league start with your characters to be able to just know how to do the bosses instead of needing to wait like a week or more. All right. Anyways, the very last tip, how to win in PoE. For me, I think having a reasonable goal and then working towards it in three months, right? That's how you win. Uh, personally, my winning right now is to obtain the cool mage blood belt, right? get a cool belt. Sometimes that's headhunter. Sometimes it's mage blood. In leagues past, my goal was always headhunter. It was reasonable for me because I had gotten it in a previous league. Uh, for some of you, your goal might be to clear the Atlas or to have a build that can do tier 16 maps and farm whatever you want comfortably. Uh, just, you know, have a pretty reasonable goal. I think if you're just starting out in PoE, a pretty reasonable goal is to be able to clear your Atlas. Uh, in your first league and then your second league maybe you clear your atlas and you farm for you know some amount of currency to be able to kill some bosses or do some end game content do a wave 30 simulacrum maybe you want to kill uh uber elder or maven or be able to do the uber bosses stuff like that or for some people it's time gated so some people will say i will i i will have a mage blood or I will have a mirror by the end of week one. And they will work extremely hard towards that. They will practice for that. They will grind in the off season, uh, getting builds ready, testing strategies out so they can hit the road running. And when league start runs, they are running with it from day one. They have the plan written out. That's what I'm going to do next league. Okay. I didn't have time to do this league. Uh, but yeah, anyways, I hope this was helpful. It was kind of just some random video I thought up. I was getting a lot of questions and it seems like we have some new people coming in from Diablo 4 and whatnot. And PoE is kind of hard, but it doesn't have to be too hard. All right. You can just read Max Roll articles. We make it so easy. As you can tell, I'm part of the Max Roll team because I, <laughs> I've shilled it like 15 times. Anyways, this video is extremely long. I didn't want it to be this long. It's League Start. I'm supposed to be streaming and making money. I'll catch you guys later. Triple Bear on YouTube, Triple Bear on Twitch. Like, sub, comment, do all the good stuff. Help me out. I'll catch you guys later. All right, peace. Good luck.